Now we start. We start our recording and we start our last lecture about the vessels, physiology of the vessels. And this topic it's venous return and circulatory shock, special special circulatory ropes and anatomy of the pulmonary circuit. Back here, where is my marker? No, this so. one. Mm -hmm. Now we can start. Uh, today's lectures outcomes. Uh, you will be able after the lecture explain how the blood in the veins returns to the heart and it's important for hard working for cardiac output. We know uh, we will discuss the importance of physical activity for venous return. Also, uh, we will discuss about shocks stages compensative, decompensative shocks, what is it, how many types of shock we know, and we will discuss about brain maintains and uh, muscles, uh, vascularity differences, pulmonary vascularity differences, and pulmonary circuits themselves. Так, the first question is the mechanisms of venous returns. Uh, we have five mechanisms of venous returns. You must know each of them because uh, firstly, they are important for your CC. In the CC, you will have uh, some questions like a task or um, situa situation tasks. Yes, uh, like one patient have these symptoms and can you explain which mechanisms activated in this situation, for example? And that's why you must understand all types of mechanisms of venous return, uh, how they work exactly, and in which situation, which venous mechanisms activated. Uh, easily, venous return is the flow of blood back to the heart. And first mechanism is pressure gradient. Uh, Mm -hmm. First mechanism, pressure gradient. Uh, blood pressure is the most important force in venous return. And for example, seven, 13 millimeter of mercury venous pressure towards the heart is pressure gradient. Uh, if uh, in the venous pressure, we have 12, 12 18 millimeter of mercury, uh, but to the central venous pressure point, where uh, we have in the vena, vena cava, for example, vena cava uh, is the most um, large vein. And when this vena cava enters the heart, we have only five millimeter of mercury uh, gradient. And for example, venous return is, um, how to explain easily? Uh, it's how my, um, it's pressure gradient, it's easy word. It's pressure how, by which um, veins, vein blood back to the heart. Uh, I will show you the movie after this slide. And in during this movie, I hope you understand more, more detail this pressure gradient. Uh, next one is gravity. Gravity, uh, I think it's understandable from the name. It's uh, how drain blood from the head and neck. It's easy. For example, when you're sitting or standing, um, blood, uh, blood from the head and neck drains for your heart during the gravity. And uh, the large neck vein or vena cava superior, they have uh, zero millimeter of mercury inside. Uh, of venous pressure. But here we know that in, no, you don't know, but you will learn that in the head we have dural sinuses of the brain. Uh, and uh, for example, if neck veins, they collapse because they have zero millimeter of mercury, um, but dural sinuses, they cannot collapse uh, because of the structure of wall and they always opened. And this is why the pressure in them, it's 10 millimeters of mercury, and it is, this is risk of air embolism. If you punctured your dural sciences, you must know this, you must import, um, memorize this information. 
Uh, but other veins uh, in the neck, they, uh, they have zero millimeter of mercury pressure and they collapsed. Mm, like when you sitting, for example. Next uh, mechanism of end of return is skeletal muscle pump in the limbs. For example, um, gravity is more uh, activated mechanism for the head and neck. But for the limbs, this is a skeletal muscle pump. Skeletal muscle pump, it's muscles uh, located in our uh, leg, in our calf here. And when they constructed, uh, mus muscles squeezed out uh, and compressed the vein and blood squeezed through these veins uh, up to the heart. That's why they're important. And this skeletal muscle pump very important. And we discussed it more detailed when we discussed how exactly exercise affected for venous return, uh, why exercises is um, important for venous return too, because of skeletal muscle pump. Okay, you hear me, guys? Yeah, yeah we hear you. Uh, here, for example, this picture, you can see, you uh, learn in the previous uh, topic that veins, medial, uh, medial veins have valves, yes? For example, art arteries, absence of vein, uh, valves, but veins have them. And the main function of the valves is what? Uh, prevent backflow of the blood. Yeah, preventing backflow. But these walls are very important. They're preventing backflow and also they prevent preventing stagnation of blood in the leg because our leg is the, uh, the most uh, bottom part of the, our body, yes. And for example, during the gravity also, uh, here blood will be in the uh, legs only. But we have skeletal muscle pump when they contracted they pressed, you see, they pressed veins, and the, because valves here is closed, veins pressed and blood goes up to the heart. And after that, they closed again in the next level. And when you compress your muscles again, they haven't way, they can go up or down, they can go only up. This is how exactly skeletal muscle pump working because of uh, walls, because of helping of walls. Or for example, if you to the relaxed skeletal muscle, you can see without the construction, uh, blood will stagnate it here between two walls. If you contract it, they start moved and squeeze up. Do you have some question? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, if we enlarge our uh... Uh, some muscles does that affect on uh, uh, blood flow <clears throat> large muscle which one um for any muscle for example triceps biceps uh, no, no, quadriceps no. Trice does that affect on the flow no we're discussing only a skeletal guys skeletal muscle pump it's muscle located only in the leg not everywhere not in the abdominal cavity or in the upper limb. They located the muscles located in the leg only. They calling skeletal muscle pump because only there here we have this function. We discussed uh, about the legs. Yeah, triceps, biceps. They have in this function. Here uh, we have gra gravity mechanisms for blood flowing, but here in the lower limb. Skeletal muscle pumps uh, have role like mechanisms when those return. Because here, gravity, for example, not in the femur, uh, in the tibial, the muscles located in the tibial, uh, near the tibial bones, they're calling skeletal muscle pump. Understanding? Okay, that's it. But, but the question, my question is, uh, when we do an exercises and our mu uh, muscle uh, size is changed or become bigger, does that affect on the flu? Size of the muscles changed, you mean? Yeah, it's enlarged because we do 
uh, and exercises and something like that. The, uh, does that uh, tie it on? Uh, no. Uh, no, 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 on no. Beans or something like that. No, it's not affected. They affect. It doesn't matter if you have more muscle or less muscle in the leg. Uh, the more uh, they affected for you when you they contract. On the, it doesn't matter, for example, if you have more mass muscles in the leg or I have less, they, we can't compare it because the mechanisms when they contract, it doesn't matter they large or less, okay? Only when they contract, they press the veins and the veins start to squeeze and blood squeeze through these veins. When they relax, they, uh, they don't squeeze. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have less muscle or more muscle in your leg, it doesn't affect for this mechanism. The main idea when they contract or don't contract. Understanding? Yes. Yes, teach. Uh -huh. Okay. So I have a question, please. Uh, what will happen if the lawyer falls open during the this mechanism? When lower what? Lawyer falls open during this mechanism what will happen to the for uh, blood flow yeah we have if uh, we if this mechanism didn't work we have stagnation of uh, blood in the lower limb it's, we have problems with the uh, blood flow in the lower limb without this mechanism because this mechanism skeletal muscle pump the most uh, important for our blood flow from the lower limb we will discuss, for example, uh, what happened if this mechanism didn't work. This is the next slides. Okay, don't be fast. For uh, it's calling venous pooling. We will discuss it. But for for example, here you see for um, if we back again, you see venous return. Uh, boy, sorry, pressure gradient. It's total mechanism for whole body. It doesn't matter for the head, for the neck, for the lower limb, for the abdominal cavity. It's total mechanism how exactly venous return to the heart. But if we separate, we plast for pressure gradient, uh, we plus gravity for the head and neck, gravity help uh, to uh, flow blood from the head and neck to the heart. For the limbs, we have mechanism called skeletal muscle pump for our muscles. Next, for due, uh, due to the skeletal muscle pump, blood from the uh, legs, from the tibial yes, bones, from there, they from the bottom, they go back uh, up to the abdominal cavity because in abdominal cavity, we have the large vein calling uh, vena cava inferior. Yeah, vena cava inferior collect uh, blood, big diameter vein, collect blood from the legs and they go to the abdominal cavity. When this blood collect to the abdominal cavity in the inferior vena cava, they, we have here another mechanism calling, uh, calling thoracic respiratory pump. Here, our respir respiration help us. Doug, do we have the picture for this one? Uh -huh. For example, here uh, we have. I no, you don't know the veins. Uh, yeah, you will understand me when you learn the veins, the vein names. Uh, thoracic respiratory pump here, uh, working through the inhalation. When you inhale, your thoracic cavity expands and thoracic pressure decrease. This decrease, um, do you remember when we discussed uh, in the previous lecture, uh, blood goes uh, in that direction when where we have less resistance, yeah? And here's the same mechanisms. When you inhale, your thoracic cavity pre, pre, uh, have expands and, have, uh, and pressure inside the thoracic cavity decreased. But your um, oh, oh, diaphragma, do you remember this muscle? Diaphragma that separate our yeah. body to cavities, yes? When you inhale, your diaphragma will press for abdominal cavity. And here in abdominal cavity, abdominal pressure increased. 
And this increasing blood, we have, you see, in abdominal cavity, we have more pressure than the, in the thoracic cavity. This why for the, uh, blood from in, uh, inferior vena cava, in, uh, they, it go for less resistant direction. It goes up to the heart. And also it can go back uh, to the lower limb because we have walls for preventing this. That's why we have only one direction to the heart. Okay, this how exactly inhale working because of pressure differences in two cavities during the inhale because of diaphragma and because of preventing um, blood flow to the lower limbs uh, because of walls in our veins. And here it's calling thoracic uh, respiratory pump. You see, but during the because of skeletal muscle pump, uh, blood veins, uh, blood for vein blood goes from the leg to the abdominal cavity through the thoracic respiratory pump. Uh, it's from abdominal cavity go to the heart. Okay. And next cardiac section, uh, it's expanding atrial space. Um, Cardiac suction is a four mechanism that work inside the heart. It's like a, um, yeah, this creates a slight suction that draws blood into the atria from the vena cava and pulmonary veins. It's two, me two mechanisms that working inside the heart directly. It's helping to uh, squeeze blood from the vein, vena cava superior and inferior to the atrial, uh, right atrium directly. Okay, you must know pressure gradient and cardiac suction to mechanism inside the heart, gravity for the upper uh, veins uh, and skeletal muscle pump and thoracic cavity that help us from the abdominal cavity and from the legs. All five mechanisms you must know. And for, Better understanding, I will show you one video. Do you see my screen? Yeah, we yes. Venus return. Do you hear her? Yes. yes. Okay. Is the flow of blood from the periphery back to the heart's right atrium. Venous return is important because the more blood returns to the heart, the more blood can be pumped out. In other words, venous return is the major determinant of cardiac output. Venous return is achieved by several mechanisms. Pressure gradient. The difference between venous pressure and right atrial pressure is the major force driving peripheral blood back to the heart. In fact, venous return can be determined as the venous pressure gradient divided by venous resistance. Factors that increase venous pressure or decrease right atrial pressure facilitate venous return. In principle, constriction of veins blocks blood flow, increases venous resistance, and reduces venous return. However, when blood vessels throughout the body are constricted, such as during sympathetic activation, the increased resistance causes blood pressure to rise, and this eventually overrides the increase in venous resistance. As a result, venous return increases. Skeletal muscle pump. Veins in the arms and legs are surrounded by skeletal muscles. They also have one-way valves in their walls that only open for upward flow. During everyday activities, such as walking, the muscles contract and squeeze blood in the veins upward toward the heart. The one-way valves prevent blood from flowing down again when the muscles relax. This is one of mechanisms by which physical exercise increases cardiac output to meet the body's needs. Gravity. In an upright position, venous blood from the head and neck flows downhill to the heart simply by gravity. Blood from the lower body and limbs, on the other hand, has to overcome gravity to return to the heart. People who stand or sit still for extended periods of time may suffer from venous blood pooling in the legs. This happens when venous pressure is not sufficient to override gravity and venous return is reduced. 
Because the heart cannot pump more blood than it receives, cardiac output may decrease, sometimes to a dangerous level, and the person may faint. One can prevent this from happening by activating the skeletal muscle pump, either by keeping the legs moving or by tensing leg muscles periodically. Breathing or respiratory pump. During inspiration, the diaphragm moves down, expanding the thoracic cavity, resulting in a decreased intrathoracic pressure and a subsequent expansion of the lungs. Part of this change in pressure is transmitted across the walls of the heart, lowering right atrial pressure and thus facilitating venous return. At the same time, the descent of the diaphragm also causes an increase in abdominal pressure. As the inferior vena cava passes through both abdominal and thoracic cavities, an increase in abdominal pressure together with a decrease in thoracic pressure squeeze the blood upward toward the heart. Increasing the rate and depth of breathing is another way the body raises cardiac output during physical exercise. Okay, understanding. Yeah, yeah. Doctor, but yeah, uh, could you send the link for this video? Yeah, I was about to ask. Okay, okay, okay. Very good video, yes? Yeah, so useful. Mm -hmm. Where you? This one. I send it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. Now I think you understand more detail about the five mechanism of venous return. Mm, Tx. Next. Uh, venous return and physical activity. In the video, you heard this, she, that she said most people who are prolonged sitting or standing, they have a problem with venous pooling or stagnation in blood in the leg. Uh, it's bad. For example, they occur with inactivity and with, for cashiers, barbers, hairdressers, members of chore, people in military service, they have this problem. And tuck, 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 here, See, um, it's a problem because cardiac output may be long, uh, low enough to cause dizziness, dizziness. And for preventing this situation, we need to activate our calf muscles. For example, you can do some exercises. If you know that uh, you need to sit down for a long time, for example, during the lecture, yes, we, we together, we're sitting for two hours. And for preventing venous pooling, we can do some exercises. You can move with your um, calf muscles, do these movements, yeah? contract your muscles when you sit, uh, and after some few minutes, you can feel that you can feel better in your leg. Uh, sometimes because we can feel some stagnation, some uh, hard feeling from the leg. And after the exercise, you will feel better. Also, it's about the venous pooling. Uh, in the Saladin, you will read that uh, jet pilots have uh, problem, yeah, have risk for this venous pooling, and that's why they were some pressure suites for pre preventing venous pooling. If you understand, yeah, it's uh, if you imagine we have only three, four, maybe five a liter in our body of blood, and if all uh, 50 60 percent of this blood go to the veins in the leg. It means you have ischemia of the brain. And we will discuss, we will say that only five, four, five minutes, it's enough for brain damage, yeah, for die, die of the brain uh, tissue. And few seconds, it's enough to lose your mind. Uh, it's for, I forget this word, to, when you break, da uh, break down, um, you feel some dizziness, you- Thank you, teacher. How? Painting. No, not painting. Mm. I will say you. 
Yeah, fainting. fainting. Yeah, you say you're right. Fainting, fainting. Mm, так, it's and, only uh, few, few seconds. Few to, seconds. To no. prevent uh, change mm -hmm. of uh, air pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not not air pressure. When they um, uh, так, как это? Pilots do some movements in the air. Yes, uh, как well, I don't, I don't know how to explain it in English for you. When they do some movements, uh, their pressure every time I go uh, down and up, and the venous pulling. It's like it's like a gravity. You see, when uh, do you know? Remember the gravity mechanism when we're sitting. The gravity uh, help our blood go down normally. But for the pilots, if you imagine when they are in the sky, they do some movements and this this gravity too. They, during this gravity, the blood uh, in the veins and in the vessels they go up and down every time. It's a big risk for uh, ischemia of the brain. They are, um, you remember, they do some movements in a few seconds, very fast. In, the, in these seconds, our body can't react so fast. That's why it's risk for, for, uh, for this one. You will read in Saladin about this. They, re, uh, they wrote it in more detail, more understandable than I trying to explain you. Um, that, but it's a very good example. Um, Next one. Um, also, physical activity and exercise they increase venous return in many ways, not uh, only preventing venous pooling. They we know yes when we start to exercise, we discussed in, in cardiac output in uh, capillary exchange, our heart beating increased, our blood pressure increased, and uh, also our vessels in skeletal muscles they increased the blood flow inside them they increased capillary exchange in the skeletal muscles themselves yes um, we also our um, exercises uh, increased respiratory rate increased action of tired thoracic pump and it's also help to um, you, you see our Exercise include, increase uh, heartbeats. It means cardiac output or a level of uh, volume of blood that uh, leave heart increased, but also these exercises increase our respiratory rate. And it means you breathe very fast and it means your thoracic pump also working faster. And here, these two mechanisms compensate themselves, you see? More blood leaves heart and more blood back, the, back to the heart again. Okay, also when you do exercise, your skeletal muscle pump activated too. And two mechanisms like thoracic pump, skeletal muscle pumps help uh, to um, venous return again. That's why during the exercise, exercising is helping you um, and don't lead to edema, for example, or venous pooling, because two mechanisms of venous return very increased and compensate the, our heart beating and increase blood pressure and great um, volume cardiac output. Do you understand, guys? Yes, yes. teacher. Because uh, you will have the special task about this, about venous return, about the physical activity. That's why I concentrate you for these two slides. You will have tasks for them, for these questions in CC. That's why you must be able to explain uh, your, show your clinical thinking, how exactly, for example, exercises increase venous return, how exactly exercises help us uh, for doing some, uh, for how exactly they increase re respiratory rate or um, cardiac output or blood pressure or cardiovascular contraction or vascular construction, for example. It's the same mechanisms, all. they all connected. Okay. 
and don't for, for example if you have more time you can you can be able to explain the sympathetic system that uh, uh, because of uh, during the uh, when we have exercises we remember to have um, neurons that gives signals to the brain yes this brain activates uh, sympathetic uh, neurons uh, for the heart for the vessels we have construction blood pressure increasing and etc cetera, etc cetera. okay it means when you will read this topic, it's this topic very small in the salad, you know, few picture, few uh, lists only, but you need to concentrate on them. You must memorize and understand the connection between, it's like this topic is like, uh, um, it's collecting everything what you read before. Okay, all your knowledge about cardiac output, about blood pressure differences, changes. Okay, guys? In because in first look, it's very easy, but it's, it's, it's this topic very important for clinical thinking, okay, for, for your CC. Okay, guys? Okay, yeah. teacher. Next, next uh, topic, part of the topic is circulatory shock. I think you heard about the shock many times. Also, you can hear, uh, you've heard about anaphylactic shock, yes? Or maybe hypovolemic shock. Uh, also, you can saw in the movies every time, oh, I shocked and someone went down uh, after some emotional stress situation, yes? It is, it's also shock. <laughs> Um, and we explain it. For example, circulatory shock is any state in which cardiac output is insufficient to meet the body's metabolic needs. Easy words, shock is when your blood pressure fastly drop, drop. It's shock. For example, when you measure um, the first symptoms, when you see someone uh, Mm, fail, fail, how this word? I forget it again. Mm. Painting, teacher. Yeah, painting. Every time I forget it. Painting. But if you see, it's uh, in real situation, yes, it's easier will be for understanding. If you see someone who fainting, you must do uh, check his pulse and blood pressure if you can, uh, if you have something near. And if his blood pressure uh, dropped, for example, normally it's 120 for 60, 80, 60, maybe someone have 160 normally. It depends on the normal for the person adapted blood pressure. But if it dropped for 90, 60, it's uh, uh, or 70, 50, uh, it's shock because blood pressure dropped. If blood pressure dropped, you can understand this, why um, patients have fainting. Not because fainting shock happened, it's opposite. Shock happened, uh, blood pressure dropped, and patients have fainting because of um, ischemia of the brain. Okay, it's understanding, guys? Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. And here, when we're discussing about the shock, we have two types. Yes, shock, we said it's about blood pressure. When, we dis when we're talking about blood pressure, we imagine two things. It's connecting with the heart and it's connecting with the vessels. Yes, contraction and dilatation of the vessels and heart beating, two things. And it's understandable that shock is uh, separated for two uh, types, cardiogenic shock, it's inadequate pumping of the heart, yeah, heart failure. And the second type, it's low venous return, or easier, it's connected with the vessels. Low venous return, LVR, its cardiac output is low because too little blood is returning to the heart. Something happened in the cardiac, uh, in the vessels of the body, that's why uh, low venous return we see. And for the LVR type, we have three principal forms. Hypovolemic shock, it's most common. When we lose blood volume because of trauma, because of burns, 
dehydration or bleeding, for example, it's hypovolemic shock. Next second, it's obstructed venous return shock. Uh, for example, when we have tumor, tumor can press vena cava inferior or vena cava superior or other great vessel uh, veins or uh, in the body. It, it will be obstructed venous return shock or aneurysma compresses vein because our aorta and vein, vena cava inferior, they are located near uh, the neighbors. And if we have aneurysma of the artery, aorta, the aneurysma can press the vein. Do you remember what I said? We never have aneurysma of vein. Aneurysma, it's only uh, for the arteries. If we have enlargement of the vein, it's varicosity. And varicosity happened only in the lower thing, never in the hand or in the abdominal cavity somewhere near the organs, only in the leg. Uh, and так, next, it's venous pooling or vascular shock. Venous pooling, uh, stagnation, yes, or something happened and have some stagnation blood in the vein, in the leg. And venous pooling shock, it's long period of standing, sitting, or widespread vas vasodilation. It's what happened with some barbers or uh, cashners and others. The neurogenic shock, uh, loss of vasomotor tone, vasodilation. It's cause of from emotional shock to brainstem injury. Do you remember what I said in the movie, someone um, in the stress situation or some shock news, and he, we can see he fainted because of emotional shock. Emotion also can lead to uh, very fast vasodilation, and we can see neurogenic shock. Okay, if you see some some situation in the movie, you can say, "Oh, it's neurogenic shock," and you will show that you're a medical student and you know about the shock. So, you hear me? <laughs> yes. Yes, teacher. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, next. Next, uh, we have septic shock and anaphylactic shock. Uh, septic shock and anaphylactic shock, it's two shocks um, that can compare two mechanisms, vasodilation and increasing of ca uh, capillary permeability. If you see for this one here, for example, when we discussed about low venous return, because cardiogenic shock, it's some understanding, yes, injury in the heart. But LVR, it's hypovolemic shock when our blood pressure decreased because of uh, decreasing of volume of the blood. Abstracted venous return shock, it's understanding. Venous pooling is also understanding because of as a dilation. Neurogenic also was a dilation mechanism. But septic and anaphylactic shock compare two mechanisms. It's vasodilation in septic shock because of uh, bacterial toxins. They trigger vasodilation in the vessels. Uh, and the second one, because these toxins increased capillary permeability, increased capillary exchange. And you can see vas the vessels vasodilate and also filtration increased. And we, we can also all, um, it means blood volume decreased too, you see? This two mechanism for septic shock. It's happened very fast. And the second one, anaphylactic shock. It's also again vasodilation and increasing of capillary permeability. But if in the septic shock, it's the reason of bacterial toxins, in anaphylactic shock, it's because of uh, immune reaction. Antigen antibodies uh, together start to uh, release histamine. And histamine, we know, it's vasodilation, vasodilatator. And here again, we can see vasodilatator and also histamine increase capillary permeability. This is how the anaphylactic shock works too. Okay, remember, these two, with two mechanisms and uh, hypovolemic obstructed venous spooling, this is another three. Okay, one, two, three. A neurogenic, it's one uh, type of the venous spooling. It's the same, but because of emotional shock, it's what type? Okay, it's not different type, it's what type of venous pooling shock. 
And septic anaphylactic is another type because they have two mechanisms, they're different. Okay, more complicated mechanisms. I hope you understand. But totally, okay. yeah, but totally shock have two cardiogenic because of heart and LVR because of vessels. Tak, next. We have two types of um, treatment, I think, not treatment, but pathogenic mechanisms. Yeah, compensated shock and decompensated shock. Compensated shock, it means uh, some mechanisms, you know, yes, because in the, our body we have some bioreflexes, chemoreflexes, and other mechanisms that should uh, react, yes, for some changes in the to blood pressure. And when these mechanisms work normally, it's compensated shock. Shock happened, but body reflexes, hemoreflexes activated, and again, blood pressure normal. But decompensated shock, it means when our mechanism didn't work, and after that, our organs start to suffer from this uh, ischemia, brain, kidney, liver, um, and other organs, in intestine, for example, also, they start to die. This is the compensated shock. Here, more detailed. Compensated shock, it's several homeostatic mechanisms that bring about spontaneous recovery. Decreased blood pressure triggers bioreflex bio and production of angiotensin II, yeah, hormone reaction, both counter, uh, counteract shock by stimulating vasoconstriction. This is how it's working. And if person faints and falls to horizontal position, gravity restores blood flow to the brain. We activate gravity mechanism of venous return and quicker it fit are raised. It, it also helped. Again, gravity. Gravity here, angiotensin hormonal um, activation, and bioreflexes, these three mechanisms. It's main mechanisms for uh, compensation shock. But decompensating shock, if a uh, compensating mechanism inadequate or if shock um, for a long time or complicated, for example, in the septic shock, anaphylactic shock, uh, this compensating mechanism didn't work. For example, these compensated mechanisms like bioreflexes and angiotensin activated in neurogenic shock after emotional shock, if a patient lay down after some few minutes, he will feel he will or she will feel better. Yeah, because of compensated mechanism activated. Or for example, a long period of standing, sitting, or venous pulling shock, it's also compensated. It can can be can compensated. Um, так, abstracted venous return or hypovolemic shock or septic shock, anaphylactic shock, they can't be uh, compensated by these mechanisms because, because of the reason, you see? For example, also cardiogenic shock because it's some problem with the heart. It will be prolonged time, not in few minutes. That's why it can be compensated by the bioreflexes and others. Also, hypovolemic, you see the reason, because of trauma, because of some disease, the degradation also, the tumor or aneurysma, it's not, it's, it's prolonged time disease. Septic shock, anaphylactic shock. This is why for anaphylactic shock, I think you heard before, we need to help, we give adrenaline and injections and other things to help to save patient life. Because this, um, these shocks can't be compensated by these mechanisms. Understanding this? Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. um, here, you see the compensated shock, uh, tag, several life treatment, positive feedback, loops of cure, okay. Poor cardiac output results in myocardial ischemia and infarction. Uh, tag, it's further weakens the heart and reduced output. It's like a loop, you see? Because of shock, our, we, have, we can feel infarction. Because of infarction, again, cardiac output decreased. It's a loop. Uh, no, uh, slow circulation can lead to uh, disseminated 
intravascular coagulation. Again, it's DIC. In Russian, it's DVS, it's disease. When um, we have clotting in the vessels inside. And this clotted vessels also decreased our blood pressure, we increased our effect of ischemia of some organs, yes, because somewhere when we have clotting, blood didn't flow there, and ever again, uh, tissue will die. Also, ischemia and acidosis of brainstem is depressed by the motor and cardiac centers, and this cardiogenic or oh, compensated mechanism never activated, yeah, because here you see all compensation mechanisms, they activate our vasoconstrictional um, cardiac centers, vasomotor centers, but here ischemia the doses, they block this and they never compensate again. We lose vasomotor tone, further dilatation, and further dilatation, they drop blood pressure and drop cardiac output. It's again like a loop. It's decreased themselves. Um, damage of card to cardiac and brain tissue may be too great to survive. Yeah. And this not compensated. Without the treatment, the compensated shock leads to death. Okay. Understanding about shock, guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next, special circulatory roles. We have three of them in brain, in muscle, and uh, in the lungs. In the brain, uh, the main thing that total blood flow to the brain fluctuated less than that and any other organs. It's uh, like, yes, 7,000 milliliters for minutes. And for example, seconds of deprivation cause loss of uh, conse consequences. Four or five minutes goes for brain damage. Um, and also one of the important thing, blood flow can be shifted from one active brain region to another. It's depending of um, work of the brain, yes? When, where we need more uh, blood, it goes in that direction. Brain regulates uh, its own blood flow by changing of blood pressure and chemistry. Um, blood pressure, because we it's connected with um, circulatory blood. For, you see, if our blood pressure constrict, why? Um, if in the total body we have construction, contraction of the vessels in the brain, they dilate. Do you remember if our blood pressure drops? in our or body, yeah? for example, in the shock, during the shock. One of the mechanisms, uh, we start to contract all blood vessels uh, in the body for decreasing blood pressure, but in the brain, uh, vessels will be decreased or delayed uh, for give more oxygen to the brain. Next, the second mechanism that's chemical acid stimulation, we connected with the pH, hypercapnia, do you remember hypercapnia? What is it? It increasing CO2. Hypocapnia is decreasing of CO2. Uh, and hypercapnia is CO2 levels increase in brain and pH decreases. Uh, and this hypercapnia decree, uh, triggers vasodilation. Easy way. Uh, when you have hypercapnia, when CO2 level increased in brain, it means you have some ischemia. Yeah? You do not have oxygen enough. This is why we have was it delayed our vessels in the brain to give more oxygen delivered to the brain and more CO2 uh, take away. Yeah? This is why we have vasodilation in hypercapnia. During the hypocapnia, it raises pH. Uh, and decrease CO2 level, we, it stimulate vasoconstriction because we not enough CO2 in the brain. Vasoconstriction, uh, it's uh, decreased blood flow to the brain. We can feel some ischemia, but this ischemia needs for uh, increased CO2 level in the brain, okay? Tak, what else? Mm, and also uh, blood 
um, flow in the cerebral blood flow. It's uh, connected with MAP, mean arterial pressure. And for example, in the normal mid, uh, mean arterial pressure is fluctuated from 60 to 440 millimeter for mercury. Uh, if it will be less than 60, we feel we can see syncope, but if it will be more than 100, smoothly, 160, it will be cerebral edema. Yeah, you remember cerebral edema is not a good thing. Yeah. 